right on this computer. So hopefully you guys had the chance to see the videos that we posted today uh, from the classes that we finished uh, this week. Did you guys see it? Yeah, of course. It's it's amazing. I mean, this is exactly why we put majority of our emphasis and effort um, on the children. Um, this week, I also was working. I had a two-hour session with a few youth. Uh, it was a very small group. There were like uh, four of them, ages 12 to 17. But it's so difficult to work with them. They're very quiet. They don't participate. Uh, two of them fell asleep. Again, it was a very small group. Um, but we really value how much the children, young children, um, gain from uh, from the program. Uh, so hopefully you guys uh, will experience the same in your endeavors in working with children. Um, I'm sure you will really enjoy it as well. All right, so let's get started. Let me share my screen. <laughs> And we'll see who else is going to show. Nobody else has mentioned anything that they cannot come. So I'm surprised that other people are not here. But anyway, uh, uh, let's do a quick review of where we started, where we're going, uh, what we're going to do um, today, tonight. Uh, so we started with our uh, faith and uh, finances. Uh, good morning, Ruth. Is this? Uh, connecting. Good morning, Ruth. Oh, so connected. There you go. Ruth is connected. Ruth, how are you today? I'm all right, thank you. And how are you too, Brother Alex? Okay, very good. I thought you were traveling. Weren't you going to the village? Yes, I did. I came back yesterday night, but I'm going back after this session. Okay, all right. And, and the reason for everybody else, uh, I know uh, Ruth was going to the village because uh, um, Ruth and a friend of hers um, in uh, Zambia are excited about actually training um, some facilitators in one of the villages, in one of the nearby villages um, to do the program. So we've been chatting and uh, trying to figure out how do we do the training in a remote area, uh, but I'm sure, God willing, uh, we'll be able to do it. So. Um, we'll talk more about that. All right. Uh, good morning, um, Dalika. Good morning, Alex. Morning. Good to have you here. Uh, so we're just uh, getting started. Uh, Going to do a uh, review. Um, so we started with our uh, spiritual goals uh, that we did. We looked at our human treasures. We were born rich with all these character traits. Uh, we all set some goals of things that we want to have that we need to patiently um, save for them and begin to work for it. Um, then uh, we did moderation, uh, creating a healthy balance in our life, in our time management, in our uh, money, in our family life, in our spiritual development, so everything. Uh, and, I, and, and I'm the first one to admit that I'm still having trouble creating a balance and moderation in my life. I, I don't think we'll ever be, get to be perfect in that area, but, but we can try. Uh, we uh, talked about uh, responsibility, uh, our responsibility for ourselves first, um, and then a majority of uh, what we should be responsible for is uh, people in our community, uh, people um, in our cities, people in our uh, country, and eventually the entire world. And, and I'm so proud. Uh, one of the reasons that I really love doing these virtual series internationally is because every individual who comes in contact with this program, not only, uh, and I'm talking about you guys, uh, not only you want to learn it for yourself, but your goal is also to teach it to other people. Um, so good morning, Zdenko. How are you today? Uh, hello. hello. Sorry for being late. I'm no, okay. No. That, that's okay. We're just getting started. We're just doing a review, so we haven't missed much. Good to have you here. Um, nice to be here. All right. Um, so that was responsibility. Um, and then we started by talking a little bit about responsibility and accountability. The main reason that we put these two in here. Um, is actually these are the foundation of our borrowing systems uh, throughout the world. And we'll get into it today. We're going to talk about borrowing 
Uh, we did a little bit last week, but we're going to get into it a little bit more. Uh, but for anyone to borrow anything, whether it's a simple pen, uh, a T-shirt, uh, borrow somebody's car, uh, borrow anything, borrow money, we have to become responsible and accountable. Um, and then uh, today we'll also touch upon thankfulness and respect. That's uh, Those are the uh, topics for today. Uh, good morning, Tukla. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any question from the topics that we discussed last week or up, uh, so far? Wow, you guys are getting everything. This is amazing. Okay. Well, this means that you can deliver this material all by yourself now. Um, all right. So uh, let's start with responsibility uh, that we talked about last week, our chores, uh, things that we like to do in our community, challenges that we have in our community. Um, and we'll be talking more about it um, later on. Uh, in the accountability, let me see. Um, let me pull up somebody's. I know a few uh, did the, this. Um, exercise um i think if i'm not mistaken to follow it uh, yes I'm, pull I'm, I'm pulling up your uh, worksheet to see what you put in into accountability let's have this open So this is what uh, Tukla put in here. Uh, again, the uh, purpose of um, this is an introduction to uh, the things that we want to improve in our societies. And also at times, uh, we do need to borrow to make these improvements. Uh, so um, Tukla put in, uh, the first goal is, uh, what do we want to do for our community? Is to, Im to improve our communities, to improve our neighborhoods. And we don't have to start big. We don't have to um, really say, well, I want to have a new uh, highway in my neighborhood or um, things things that neighbors can do together. And this is something that uh, I'm proud to say that the Baha'i community uh, is actively engaged in throughout the world is to bring neighbors together in a street, in a very small neighborhood so they can begin to look at what is there and what's not there. So um, took off of in here um, that there are stores for nutrition and that's what is there. Shelter, he said, not enough houses. People are living in one room. Um, that is um, that is definitely a challenge. One of the challenges that we are facing here in California, uh, California in the west, uh, the west coast of the United States actually has the about 40% of one state has 40% of uh, homeless people throughout the United States. Uh, we have a lot of them, unfortunately, in our area. Um, we are always looking at how to help these individuals. So that's a big issue in our hometown to people not even having a place to stay in. Um, he says variety of work, uh, shops are there for clothing, uh, hospitals, um, health are emotional. Uh, um, this is great to go. Well. Um, often when we do this one, houses of worship, people just think about churches, but there is a lot. And uh, part of this is that we need to be respectful of all the different uh, spiritual beliefs, uh, uh, religions and everything, just being uh, mindful of uh, everyone. So there are temples, churches, mosques, synagogues, uh, stupa. I'm not sure what the stupa is. Uh, to well, uh, would you like to tell us what the stupa is? Uh, it's a, a kind of Goomba. Okay, is it is it like a temple? Did he lose his voice? So, Claude, if you're talking, we cannot hear you. Okay, all right. Um, so education, it says we have universities. Uh, rule, <laughs> I like this one. Uh, Tukla, would you like to elaborate on this? Rules and laws, not that specific. Uh, does everybody have their own rules and laws? Uh, yeah, there are uh, rules, uh, but uh, that not specifically defined uh, everybody has. It's like, uh, it is very, <clears throat> 
uh, Nepalese people are very humble and kind. Uh, kind of, uh, they don't uh, follow the rule, like specific uh, rules. Uh, it's like uh, everybody has got their different rules. Okay. All right. And, uh, and and even in here, if I'm not sure how much of it is shown on international uh, television stations, but unfortunately, even here in the United States, because of uh, lack of resources, uh, there's been a lot of unruliness. Uh, people just go and rob stores in daylight while other people are just looking. I mean, we do see it uh, happen. It's very unfortunate. Uh, Part of it is there's not enough law enforcement. There are laws, there are rules, but there is not enough resources to enforce them. Uh, and even some people that uh, commit a small crime, they do not put them in prison. I uh, said so this is not, uh, they don't have the resources. They just let them go. So it's it's very uh, unfortunate there. Uh, so we have, our, all right, so let's see what the Tukwat said that's missing uh, in your community. Health and fitness, land, fitness equipment, permission, uh, from the local government, money people. All right, so these are the things that are needed um, to create these health and fitness. And he said, um, as far as making an advancement, we may need to start a business, borrow money, uh, collateral, could be a land, a house, um, an interest. So uh, my question is, first question that I have um, is, um, who should uh, borrow? Should everyone feel like we are entitled to borrow or should we have certain uh, criteria before we borrow anything? It doesn't matter, money or anything else. Who would like to share some thoughts? Uh, I will share something Okay. on this. Uh, I guess uh, borrowing is uh, uh, very necessary, uh, but in that case, uh, when uh, borrowing uh, can make another money, like a borrowing should not be uh, done to for uh, like uh, I mean to say uh, for non-performing assets uh, like spending and etc. But uh, borrowing should be done to the uh, <clears throat> non-income generating assets and for like kind of uh, to the business and for education like uh, that has some specific goals uh, that will uh, help you. Uh, to grow more and that will help to earn money uh, and for a specific uh, reason borrowing should be done and like uh, there must be a purpose of borrowing and that must generate uh, income okay all right very good thank you um other thoughts anybody else on um, what should we borrow for Okay. Um, can you, can anyone think of, I mean, I'm sure you have seen in your societies, in your very specific societies, do you see people that borrow, uh, particularly money, since we're talking about specific, do they, have you seen people borrow money for things that they should not be borrowing? And is it something that's normal or usual in your society? Anyone? <coughs> Ruth, go ahead. Yes, I've seen some who oh, like they, when they borrow, they buy an asset which is not even generating income. And when it comes to payback, they start struggling. Okay, can you give an example? What are some of the things that you've seen people borrowed money for and they shouldn't have? Yeah, they borrow money they buy maybe a fridge, TV, house or the assets, maybe, yeah. Then when it's time to pay, because that asset did not generate any income for them to pay back. Okay, all right. So okay. it's, they face challenges when paying back. Okay. And again, it's even put them into asking for, into borrowing more than they should because they have to ask for money from elsewhere so that they pay the money from where they borrowed earlier on. So it's like borrowing from borrowing to the next level, just like that. Okay, all right, very good, thank you. 
uh, anybody else? Can anybody else uh, share some thoughts? Uh, what What do you see in your societies, in your communities, in your country that people borrow for and they shouldn't really be borrowing? I mean, we have a lot of examples here in the U.S. and I've heard it from other countries, but I'd like you guys to share. Oh, everybody's quiet today. Okay, so um, here in U.S., uh, we see people, uh, especially as we were talking about it last time, uh, the U.S. Uh, system, uh, financial system, heavily relies on uh, credit and, and borrowing. There's a lot of good borrowing, uh, there's a lot of good credit, but then also there's a lot um, that people get themselves into trouble. Uh, and, and particularly now, as our inflation um, goes higher and higher, uh, people have to borrow, let's say, from their credit cards. Credit cards is one of the uh, biggest challenges that um, uh, people are having. Um, it's like they feel like it's free money, they borrow, um, and because our credit card companies here allow, the only thing that they ask uh, from the borrower is to pay 2% of the balance every month. So if I uh, borrow, if I purchase a pair of shoes uh, for $100 and put it on my credit card, uh, the credit card company allows me to pay that back over time. And they say that the only thing, the minimum that I would have to pay every month um, is uh, two well not two dollars but uh, two percent of it but there's usually a minimum like maybe ten dollars that I have to pay back every month but then on the other side they love doing this because right now they charge about twenty five percent to thirty percent interest um, on that one hundred dollar that I borrowed from them. Uh, and most people don't recognize this they don't realize it and they uh, think that oh this is great I can borrow on my credit card and then pay it over time. Uh, for things that are not necessary, if we are in a situation that we have to, then sure, why not? Uh, one of the other examples was uh, two years ago when we started a virtual series um, in uh, Ghana. Uh, the gentleman who started the program, he said one of the biggest challenges that we have in uh, Ghana is that people are borrowing uh, money to make sure they have a new outfit, new have they have a new um, uh, dress uh, for every time they go to church. So every Sunday when they go to church, they feel like they have to have a new dress. Every time they go to a, a gathering, they feel like they need to have a new dress. And he said, that is something that's really um, getting people into trouble. So again, if anybody would like to share um, some things that you have seen, I think this is very common in a lot of societies. Um, Sundari, how about in, in India? How is the borrowing situation in India? Actually, the other day I read that uh, Indians are very frugal and only 18% of the people have got, I mean, 18% of the uh, people have got debts. Whereas oh. in the US and other countries, it is around 60-70%. Yes. But it is really surprising because uh, most of the people are very poor. Mm -hmm. And um, if at all they borrow, they borrow from money lenders. That is still prevalent, even though lots of banks are there. Okay. Um, I think uh, that might not have surfaced. Otherwise, they won't say only 18% is borrowing. Okay. All right. Uh, um, yes, let, let's hope that that doesn't change in India and other countries, because uh, while the borrowing system can be very beneficial uh, in some societies, like uh, our family, we borrow a lot. Uh, but we never pay uh, interest unless if it's an income uh, generating asset. Um, so, but I'm constantly using, uh, if you see, and I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not joking. If you see how many credit cards there are on my desk, uh, you will just, uh, it blows my mind away. But this is my hobby, using credit cards and the benefits that we get from credit cards here in the U.S. is actually my hobby. Uh, but I'm in very much control of it. And I don't recommend that to most people here because they don't have control. Uh, all right, so let's look at this. I put some uh, examples in here uh, of things that we should borrow, um, whether they produce income or not, a possible collateral interest and interest rate. I mean, these are just something that I have put in there. Um, so we have higher education. I'm not sure how many other countries uh, youth have to borrow money to go to college. Uh, 
a university here in the US, we, uh, it's becoming impossible uh, to go to universities without borrowing money because they have gotten so expensive. There are still some uh, free ones, but it is getting very expensive. Does it produce income? Uh, not immediately, but it's an investment that we're hoping that will do that for us. Uh, unfortunately, it's very unfortunate that a student loan is one of the uh, debts in US that can never be forgiven. Uh, you have to pay that, you have to pay it back. There are ways of uh, like, uh, if uh, some uh, loans from the government allow you to go work in like remote areas uh, of the country where not many people want to go, like if there's a cold place uh, or something like that, they do exchange that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the loans, the student loan cannot be uh, forgiven at all. Um, starting and expanding a business, that's a business loan. It's definitely could produce more income. Um, often as a collateral, they ask for a personal house. There's interest involved in it. A uh, personal home, the same thing. It doesn't generate income unless if you have somebody uh, that can pay you part of the rent. Um, the real estate investments. Um, this one is our family's uh, favorite. Um, that's what we do. That This is actually how uh, my wife and I are able to do these programs at no cost because we've been very fortunate um, to be able to um, invest in real estate, especially when right after the last uh, crash in 2011, 2012. Um, and now our entire household uh, is provided uh, through the rent that we collect uh, from these uh, real estate. Um, then there is, uh, you might have an emergency um, of convenience, these are credit cards, or for societies that are no credit cards, it could be bank loans, personal loans, uh, things like that. Uh, we have another lending system that's very bad in the US. And unfortunately, a lot of people that are not educated um, use this. Um, these are places that uh, let's say if I am working, I have an employment uh, and I can go tell them that I'm going to get my check, uh, get my payment from work next week. Uh, they are willing uh, to hold, to put a hold on that payment from my work, but they'll give me the money early on. Uh, but this is not unheard of. They do charge like 400% interest or something like that. It's very bad, but unfortunately, a lot of people um, do use this. Okay. So that's all I wanted to cover on the uh, borrowing. Um, any any thoughts? Uh, I would love to hear from uh, the Zimbabwe team. Lucy, Tavango. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I mean, it's, um, it's basically the same here, um, and I think we we have a lot of people borrowing. Um, irresponsibly, like uh, some people borrow to buy cars. Recently, a government gave us a loan for worth thirty million dollars to um guys in Parliament, and uh, people have been buying cars. You know, it's not you know not really buying assets that will generate income, just spending and just being crazy about a lot of things. Okay. All right. So wh why do we think that is? I mean, why do we think that, uh, and this is what I was asking, uh, while banks, uh, maybe friends or credit cards and things, why they are, are willing to give us a loan because obviously there is, <clears throat> uh, it's to their benefit. They do charge interest and, and fees and other stuff. Uh, how could someone uh, prepare themselves not to be taken? Why is it that we feel like as a borrower, uh, or people that just borrow for anything. Why is it that that's happening? Uh, any thoughts on that? Like, why is it that I'm not borrowing or I'm borrowing responsibly, but then other people, they just borrow for uh, things that they really don't need? Why do you think that is? They are not able to control their desires of buying things. Okay, yes, they're not in control of their desires. Um, it, and that is something that uh, really... Um, let me go back to our uh, budget sheet. Uh, this helps really a lot. Um, having an idea of what our actual income and expenses are. 
Um, so we don't get uh, tempted. I mean, we still get tempted whenever we see things. And this is our societies. Our societies, I think it's very universal. It runs on temptations and desires. Companies are constantly advertising um, their products uh, in different ways. They make them look glamorous. They make them look good. They uh, Because they know that our human nature um, is drawn into uh, these type of uh, material things. Uh, so, but for us to develop the character traits of um, self-discipline, these are what's really needed. Um, we need to have self-discipline, have goals in life. That our goal is not to uh, accumulate um, just uh, material things that are not beneficial. I mean, we do need things. We do need to have a place to live in. We do need a car to drive, if that's what it is. Uh, but really creating self-discipline, having moderation in life between all different aspects of life, it's really and and this is something that uh, it really needs to start um, from um, from young ages. That's that's what needs to happen. All right. Any question on the borrowing, uh, whether it's general? Um, I, I know that uh, there are very specific things for each country, for each society. But are there any questions about the borrowing systems? Okay, everybody's quiet. Is it good for the economy if people borrow more? If it's if it's done responsibly, yes. Um, I mean, we see that we make advancement. So, um, for example, if you have a restaurant and it is doing well, and you have a lot of customers, and customers have to wait outside um, to get into um, your restaurant. Uh, there's not enough um, places to sit, so it would be good to go to someone to a bank or something. And borrow some money so you can expand the restaurant. Don't you think so, Sundari? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Mr. Alex, today a lot of uh, times I'm missing. I'm, I'm not getting your voice. Many times uh, it is oh. missing. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't know about others. Uh, for me, it is happening. Uh, I, 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 a few times I've gotten it on my screen that internet might be slow. I don't know why my internet is slow. I have shut everything off. I don't think anybody else is uh, in the house. But it's very possible. So I apologize for that. I, I need to I need to have a hard uh, connection to my computer for next week. All right. Okay. Any other uh, questions about uh, borrowing? No. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, so uh, the next two lessons are kind of interconnected. Um, it's about being thankful and respectful. Um, I believe that, um, and I'll get your opinion too. Um, that we have become a generation that are in the entitled generation. Uh, we feel that everything that we have and everything that we don't have, we should have it immediately. Um, for example, what are the things that uh, we should be thankful for? I'm asking the audience. What are some of the things that you're thankful for? Top of the The gift of life. Gift of life, okay. Yeah. Other others, what are the things that in your life that you're thankful for? Let's see. This is uh Tupla. I'm gonna read his uh, comments in here. Uh Tupla says my family, friends, life, education, uh health, um current wealth, okay, and, and jobs. Uh, so there's a lot to be thankful for. And, and I think um, us who are a little bit older, uh, maybe we appreciate things a little bit more, um, maybe for various reasons. Uh, part of it could be that how we grew up, the environments that we grew up, uh, and then our um, children uh, may not see that. Our children are living in a completely different uh, lifestyle. Um, they have a lot of things uh, available to them. Um, Zdenko, you've been very quiet to net today. Uh, how do you see your children? Uh, sorry. Uh, so, so, so the question is, what do you see in your uh, children uh, being different uh, like when uh, you and I were growing up? Are they thankful for the things that they have? Or no, they yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's very different from from my childhood. Uh, well, uh, they use uh, things that we don't have in our time. They they of course they live with that. They they were born with that, and and they 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 think that that is normal to have that. They think that it's obviously that that you, that they have should have iPad or I don't know the smartphone. They broke one and they instantly think that they have they they must have another one. Okay. And uh, they communicate with other children with that. That is their normal. Uh, sometimes I want to punish them for something uh, with taking that smartphone for one day or a few hours. And uh, psychologists said that I am not allowed to punish children with that because that is the way of life communication. Okay. I have to be on other ways to punish them. So, so what other ways do you have? We cannot beat them. We cannot take their cell phones away. What, what, what is left? Uh, other limitation, but not with the smartphone. Smartphone is uh, essential for their life. That's uh, psychology said. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like to use the word consequence as opposed to punishment. Uh, I mean that that's just me because punishment, at least in English, I'm not sure. Um, uh, I'm sure you have different words in uh, Croatian for punishment and consequence. Consequence yeah. to me is that, well, I did something and here's the reaction. Here's what I need to do to correct it. Punishment yeah. is like, I did something very wrong and I need to be punished for it. That's just my- Oh, okay. My, my English is not, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> perfect in English. No, no. So that I want to explain, but I understand you. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, no, it's, it's, a, it's the same thing here too. I mean, most parents, I mean, this this is one of the things that we're trying to change the mindset here. Most parents here, yeah, uh, when their children do something wrong, they say, oh, I'm going to punish you. Um, so um, here we're trying to, uh, to help children understand because we want them to feel comfortable. And this is what I've done with our boys and also um, when we go to school and bring up this conversation because it has to do with being truthful. Because uh, when we think that we did something wrong and we're going to be punished for it, then truthfulness kind of goes out the door. Uh, we'll tell lies and, and things happen. But if we look at it that, well, I did something wrong um, and I'm going to take uh, responsibility for it. Uh, and there's some consequence. I have to make a changes to it. So that's why, at least in the English, I'm sure everybody has different um, things in their languages. Uh, but yes, you're in, in right. In Croatia, we also use this word. My wife always uses this word because it's new normal. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm not very precise when I'm talking. Yep, yep, exactly. Okay, all right, very good. Uh, so so it, it is. Um, I, just, I remember our children when they were in uh, grade, I think like six, five or six or seven, uh, they were playing Minecraft. And their biggest complaint was that that, internet is lagging internet it was like they were it was the end of the world for them they were just going to i'm serious they were going to have a heart attack and it's like okay boys uh you can do other things you can go outside with play with your friends if the internet is slow then and they kept begging me well how come we cannot get a faster internet it's like we don't need faster internet uh and sometimes now that faster internet is the normal is the minimum that we get I do ask them, I do remind them, it's like, do you remember uh, the days when you would complain? Uh, so overall, um, this is something that we're seeing and maybe others can uh, comment on it. Um, our youth um, that are entering the workforce, uh, they don't have the patience of uh, climbing up, uh, you know, growing a little by little. Um, another thing that we are seeing is that uh, because um, everybody, uh, at least in uh, a lot of societies, can start investing in stocks and things through their uh, uh, mobile phone. Uh, they feel that, well, if I can do this, if I can just trade stocks, why should I go to work? Uh, why should I go to school? Is that happening in other parts of the world? A 
similar, but for example, in Croatia, we don't like to invest in share uh, shares. In okay. 2008, we have problem with these stocks with prices that that going down, mm -hmm. and a lot of people lost money. So it's not very popular now. Okay. All right. I mean, it's, but uh, real estate or some other things uh, today people often think that uh, it's not uh, it's it's not uh, very thankful to work because you cannot earn a lot mm -hmm. with a lot of other things for gambling with with, uh, with with gambling on sport for example yes. people try to turn some money they put they uh, they borrow money. Sometimes they borrow money and they invest in uh, gambling to Brazil, for example, in uh, football. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, I totally understand. Uh, so, so yes, uh, as uh, I think the internet is a double-edged uh, sword. Um, it has a lot of great things, but it also has a lot of drawbacks. Um, that um, especially us who are older generation did not have that. Yes, we did not enjoy the uh, uh, the comforts and the flexibility uh, of the internet and the information uh, uh, that, oh, sorry, I'm going to wait. Waiting, okay, it should be, yeah, I just, I just got a uh, notice on my thing that, the internet was stable. I don't know why my internet um, is doing this, but I apologize for it. Anytime, anytime you cannot hear me, please put a note in the chat, and I'll wait until uh, the internet becomes uh, stable. Uh, so um, it, it, it is. I mean, that's something that we hope uh, to be able. I, I know for a while my wife had a little uh, piece of paper on the refrigerator, and each one of us every day we were supposed to write something that we were thankful for. Instead of complaining all the time, oh, we don't have this, we don't have this, we don't have this, uh, while we live a very comfortable life, there's really nothing that we should complain about, but we often forget. So um, that's why we put thankfulness in here. Um, there is a video um, that's actually about education. Uh, oh, and the, and the three columns that we have in here uh, are the things that we must have, uh, that we will not necessarily die from, but it's like, it's very good to have. And uh, Tukwa has a very good list of it in here. And then things that uh, it's okay, we are thankful for, uh, but we don't necessarily have to have. Um, and then unnecessary things. Uh, so let's see, what do you guys think? Um, there are, are there, there are elements in our life, in our daily lives, and I, and I know that it's everywhere in the world, that we can absolutely, we shouldn't even have. Uh, it has become a very uh, common thing. Uh, we take it for granted, uh, but it's, I'll give you a hint, but it's also harm, uh, harmful um, to our environment that we can definitely do without. Can anyone think of that? Plastic. Thank you. And I'm going to pull, um, there is a, I have this open, uh, plastic. Uh, can you elaborate on that, please, Sundari? Yeah, um, people are very, very um, uh, insensitive about the way they are behaving with plastic. And when we read about the effect of the plastic, small, small edges uh, that we throw very casually, the effect of it on the animals which are living in the sea, it is very pathetic to see them. And uh, even the governments are very, very reluctant to ban the plastic companies. I don't know why they should have done it long back. Only um, lip service they are giving. Nobody is taking any serious effort. Uh, of course, we need plastic, but at least they can do something about it. Something. You know, they can ban something. I don't know what they should do, but uh, so much plastic uh, doesn't seem to be good for us. Okay. Um, can anybody think, why is it that governments are not... Uh, taking this seriously and they're not banning plastic. Does anyone have any idea? And is this uh, is this a common thing in other societies? Uh, Rebecca, go ahead. Uh, well, producers of plastic think that uh, obviously they earn money from producing plastic and uh, 
there is a lot of consumers of that plastic. It's hard to ban something that is useful. And of course, they the companies pay the taxes to government. So it's hard to forbid to the uh, what they produce, the core business. It's core be their core business. They earn money from that, pay taxes, and who can forbid that? Okay. Uh, does everybody know uh, where plastic comes from? But this will help. Where do we get plastic from? Where does the raw material come from? Ah, everybody's fine. This is a science question. The rubber. Uh, <clears throat> no. Uh, plastic is a. Uh, Tavo, go ahead. You can say something. I think it it comes from petroleum and uh, these oil companies. Exactly. Plastic comes from oil. It's a by, it's a it's a extract from oil. So I think that answers uh, everybody's question. Is because we if we don't use plastic, uh, then uh, and we don't use oil, majority of the, the majority of the, the world problem probably will be solved. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry that it was intermittent. I think it should be okay now. I don't know why. Uh, uh, let me let me just send a message. See if my son is watching video or something. Somebody better be watching video. Uh, give me one second, guys. Let me just see who's. Thank you. Hello, Zdenko. Zdenko, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, sorry, everyone. Uh, the our family is saying that the internet has been a little bit slow. Um, so it's and it's not just for this. I apologize for it. I thought maybe somebody is watching a video or something. Uh, Tavo, did you have a question for Zdenko? Uh, no, Alex. I just want. I was just congratulating the Denko. They beat Brazil yesterday and broke out of many people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Very good. Uh, okay. So um, yes, plastic. As we were talking about, it's. Um, I don't think we need to talk about how harmful it is, uh, because it's a product of oil. Um, so governments are uh, very slow in banning them. Uh, one of the greatest things about our states, California, California has always been in the forefront of uh, taking action on these. Um, so I think it was five years ago uh, that the uh, government in California, the governor in California, banned the use of, not banned them, but they said people who want to use plastic shopping bags, um, they have to pay for it. Um, that helped them a little bit. Uh, then I think it was last year uh, that they banned the plastic straws uh, from the drinks. Uh, even the styrofoam um, boxes uh, that restaurants use to uh, give out food, those are being banned. So there's a lot that is happening in here, but it's just not enough. Uh, what can we do? Uh, I mean, do we have to wait for governments uh, to ban uh, plastic or are there things that we can do? Any thoughts? Of course, we can do it. When we go out, we can have a bag. We can have, instead of the plastic bottles, we can use some uh, metal, bo metal bottles. There's a lot that we can do also, but uh, you can't expect uh, everybody to be very, uh, very... Um, aware of these things. Well, well why not? Uh, I mean, what is preventing us? I mean, to me, it's it's very easy. I always carry my bottle. Um, I don't use any plastic bags at all. Um, not even rub it, you know, for uh, trash. I don't use plastic bags. But everybody does it. I mean, and even in our household, I can easily say if I wasn't around, they would be using plastic bags. 
uh, why do we think people are just not waking up uh, and saying, okay, enough is enough? Yes, the restaurants provided, the uh, supermarkets provided, but I can bring my own plastic bag. Why do you uh, not reusable bag? Sorry. Why do you think that is? Why people are not taking this seriously? Any thoughts? So, Claude, Delica, you guys have been very quiet. How is the plastic issue in Nepal? Hello. Uh, okay, everybody's everybody's quiet. I don't think the internet is bad. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, well, in my case, uh, from time to time, I can't hear. And oh. it's it's all uh, I hear so just a part, and, and I'm not sure what was the start of the sentence or, or middle of the sentence. Okay. Sorry. So so the question is uh, why people are not taking uh, this plastic issue seriously? Why we don't have to wait for the government to fix it? I um, I, so. I catch most of that. Okay. I think I think that uh, people. Uh, they uh, want to live comfortable life, and this plastic helps them. And they they don't see the the direct connection from using that plastic with uh, environment. Mm -hmm. I think that that is the main problem. Okay. We, we all, most of the people are aware of that problem because uh, this plastic is floating on the on the sea, but. Most of people don't see that. They they don't feel on on their skin that problem. Okay. I think that, that, that I, I will use the word punishment. I think that this uh, when when people have to pay for that, that uh, they they'll start to not use the plastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. That that's very true. And and I was very shocked uh, when this law was introduced in California. Uh, they began to pose a 15 cents uh, for uh, plastic bags and 10 cents for paper bags. Um, I thought that people would just continue to go with their lives, but it really made a difference. It really made a change. People stopped, uh, not everyone, but a lot of people did stop using that. However, then COVID happened and everything just went off the door because then everything became delivery, everything became delivery and uh, for san uh, for things to have uh, sanitized things, um, the plastics were began introduced. So it was very unfortunate. Um, all right, so, uh, but I really, I mean, I don't give up and, and often people laugh at me or they give me a hard time. It's like, what are you trying to do? Save the planet? And my always, my response is always, yes, I do my part. Uh, even if it's one plastic bag, um, I do the best I can. That's that's all I can um, do. Uh, and and through our program, that's why we have this thankfulness and the respect. Uh, the next lesson plan is because we need to awaken uh, our children. Um, hopefully, our children will take things uh, a lot more seriously. Okay, I just stopped there because I got a notification. Again, I'm very sorry about the internet. I don't know what is happening. Um, so um, if you don't hear me, please put it in the chat. Uh, as part of the thankfulness of this lesson plan, we've uh, kind of done this exercise. Uh, like I said, there is a video that goes along with this and it emphasizes the need for, uh, for education because a lot of people don't value having access to education, particularly um, here in the uh, United States, because education up to grade 12 is um, free, um, but then there are a lot of children and families that don't value it. Um, so the idea of tree is that uh, us humans are like a tree. Um, and uh, we ask the participants to uh, write down what they put in here in their list as far as we must have. The necessary uh, things, uh, let's say food, water, clothing, shelter, and health, uh, we ask them to write it in the trunk of the tree. Because if you cut the tree, um, like right about here from the trunk, uh, it will die. It will never grow uh, to be a big tree again. 
but then things that we have and we're thankful for and uh, we can live without, we put it in the branches. So if you see when a tree is trimmed, when the branches are cut, or when it loses its leaves uh, in the fall, uh, it, I'm waiting because I see my picture going slow. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, when a tree is uh, trimmed um, or uh, it loses its leaves, it usually grows back bigger and stronger um, the next year. So us humans need to learn to be thankful trees, uh, that we are thankful for the things that we have, um, uh, and then by giving away the things that we don't necessarily need, uh, or we grow out, uh, our children grow out of their um, clothing very fast in the young years. Um, so we can become generous and be helpful to others. Let me see, there's a comment in the um, section in the chat from Ruth that says, lack of community sanitization, uh, sanitization and how to uh, separate uh, no biodegradable from biodegradable waste management and also the government doesn't have enough machines that can recycle the plastic in most of the communities here in uh, Zambia. Uh, Ruth, it's the same problem here too, even in US. Um, we used to uh, sell, I think we used to sell or send our recyclable material to China. Uh, because I'm not sure if you know, a lot of goods come from China to United States, clothing, uh, furniture, uh, just you can, if you can think about it, most of them comes to US from China. Um, so these were all used to be shipped and they're still being shipped in the big containers on the ships. But there was not much, maybe some food uh, would go back, but a lot of times um, these containers would go back empty. Uh, so I think up to like two years ago, maybe two, three years ago, China used to buy um, a recyclable material, um, but then they stopped doing that. And I was very sad uh, because I would see people grab things that's not even needed, they wouldn't do. And I'm not sure if this is true in other societies or not. So for example, the concept of uh, plastic that's not needed in, I wait. the internet okay uh, so in our fast food restaurants uh, for example uh, McDonald's here uh, we have for kids uh, for children they have a little box that it has the whatever food that's in there and it is usually a little plastic toy uh, inside that uh, box and most of the time that toy would not even make it outside the restaurant outside the McDonald's and it would be such a waste. Um, one of the things we always did with our family, I always tried to refuse um, taking this stuff. Um, so uh, wow. instead of recycling, I always uh, encourage people to refuse. If you see something that you don't need, um, just don't take it because it is for free. I think our societies. Uh, this generation, they feel like, well, it is there, uh, it's free, I don't have to pay for it, or sometimes I paid for it, so it's my right to take it, uh, so I'm entitled to it. Mm -hmm. um, do you see that in your societies? Uh, things that are just available at no cost, but they're not needed. Anybody? Yeah, in Croatia, it's the same. So same, and we had that problem, and months or years, uh, past month or years, uh, there is a lot of forbidden of this uh, plastic, even in uh, McDonald's. Okay. But most people are not happy because now we use paper, mm -hmm. and it's not so, uh, the plastic was better, but uh, people like to enjoy in their food, in the in that stuff that we we get in uh, McDonald's. That's that's true. But 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 uh, these moves are necessary. We all have to use the the things that uh, that are not so bad for environment. Of course, 
Okay. Yes, and, and we have we have to be very cautious. Uh, again, I see uh, an example was uh, one time we went to a uh, restaurant uh, for pizza. Uh, so we ordered our pizza, and then while we were waiting for the pizza to be ready, um, there was plastic utensils on the side. There was forks, knife, and spoon. And and I saw people grabbing all three of them, and just because it's available, they would just grab three or four, even though they may need it only one. But I was thinking to myself, uh, okay, with a knife, you would cut the pizza. I can understand that. Uh, fork, uh, pizza is made to be made by finger and hands. Why would you even need a, a fork? But then what would you do? What do you do with a spoon, a plastic spoon and pizza? Uh, but humans, us humans, we become that we see things and we just grab. Um, another one is whenever there are gatherings that I see that they are using uh, plastic uh, bottle waters, uh, people just grab them and they drink half of it and then they throw a half full plastic bottle away, uh, not even realizing um, that not only the uh, water in there is not better than other waters, uh, because scientifically it has been proven, at least here in the U.S., uh, that unless if the water is labeled as spring water, uh, it's generally the same water that comes from uh, the faucet. Um, they just take it out, they filter it, uh, but then it sits in the plastic bottle, it sits under the sun, under the cold, it gets transported, and it does in some cases even causes cancer that people don't recognize. Um, so educating our children and youth in this area can I think have a huge impact um, on our um, uh, on our finances uh, because it is very expensive too. Uh, I have done this study. Uh, I usually have one of those plastic bottles, and I'm not. I don't know if you have done it or not. Um, I compared the price of a plastic bottle water that we buy from the store um, to the cost of water uh, that comes from the um, sink uh, from the faucet. How how much more expensive do you think uh, that bottled water is? Can anyone make a guess? Or have you ever done anything like that uh, in your area? Compare. Uh, Zabanka, go ahead. Yes, uh, I compared. It's few times more. It's, uh, I don't know, 10 or 20 times uh, more expensive. Cool. Okay. Anybody else has done that? Compare. Uh, if if your drinking water is uh, safe uh, from the faucet, as opposed to buying those uh, small plastic bottles, has anybody else done the comparison? Yeah, it is. I think nearly five times more. Five times more. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that that's not that bad. Um, I I did the comparison uh, and the least expensive bottled water that we buy usually from Costco. It's one of the big stores. Uh, I compared it to the water that comes from the sink and the plastic bottle was 2000 times as more expensive as what My we get. God. Exactly. Uh, but because the plastic bottles are so inexpensive, it's like 10 cents for plastic bottle and then uh, if we uh, they add on the five cents for recycling, so fifteen cents, really nobody uh, pays attention to it. But when uh, we do the comparison with the water that comes, and especially uh, here in the U.S., most of the water that comes from the faucet is regulated. It's controlled by government. It's tested multiple times a day. Uh, of course, there are some areas that have problems, but uh, it is very safe and. What I have noticed that a lot of times when we go to schools, I do ask the children, it's like, uh, who drinks from the faucet? And some of them say, oh, that comes from the toilet. This is not good. This is bad. And I do ask them, who has told you that? Okay, I'm going to wait. I just got the internet. All right. Uh, so it's that education that we need to provide because not knowingly, um, our finances are being heavily affected uh, by our lack of knowledge of how much things actually cost. What is the actual cost of it? Okay. Uh, let me see how we're doing here. 
Okay. Um, all right. So uh, should we take a break or are we good? Should we continue? Yeah, we can continue. Very good. Okay. All right. So let's get to it. So, so this was the uh, thankful um, lesson. Um, again, there's video in there. There's the three. There's all of this stuff. So it can completely uh, fill in like a one hour. We normally do this in a full hour um, session in here. Uh, respect is a very much a continuation of that. Uh, I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. I like to get into the uh, investment. Um, uh, it, it, it's the same thing in here. Uh, we do, we waste a lot of things. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, you can and you see that are being wasted uh, in your societies? I'm sure we see Food. it. Food. Food. Yes. Okay. Other things. You guys can put it in the chat as well. Water. Food, water, yes. Um, how about time? We waste a lot of time, especially now. I think uh, it doesn't matter whether we're child, youth, or adult. Uh, we're wasting a lot of time on social media. Uh, it seems like there's always a new app. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone has seen the new app. It's called uh, Be Real. Um, have you seen that? Has everyone seen that? No. No, you haven't seen. It. Okay, so that's that's a new app, and basically the idea is that uh, you set a time of a day, and every day you get a reminder to take a picture of yourself at that time and whatever you're doing, whether you're sitting on the toilet, whether you are in classroom, whether you are working, exercising, uh, whatever you're doing, you're supposed to take a picture of yourself and post it. And it's like, so what does that do for us? <laughs> and and people are just going crazy over it. Um, it to me it just doesn't make sense how much time we waste on social media and nonsense things. Uh, so it's it's very important for us and particularly for our children uh, to learn because they are seeing this as normal. They see that this is a normal way of life. If I don't waste, uh, if I'm conservative, um, people. Um, think that there's something wrong with me. Has anyone ever noticed that? That if we don't waste, if we are conservative, uh, people think we are abnormal. Yeah. Can you give an example, please, Sundari? Yeah, actually, when we uh, uh, normally we engage in maximum one Facebook or uh, WhatsApp, but now it goes on in Instagram, Twitter, there are so many apps available. And if you are not uh, very conversant with all these things, you are supposed to be a little uh, backwardish. Knowledge, knowledge is less, they feel. But uh, Sabu, one of them is enough. Social media, one or two will be enough. Why should we have multiple? And as you said, exactly, most of it is narcissism. Yeah. Taking the pictures of their own uh, self and posting it. All that is, um, I don't know how far it is good for the society. It, I, I don't think it is good for our society. Uh, it, it's, it's all part of uh, the entertainment. Uh, we feel like we have to be constantly entertained or to entertain other people. Um, I, I think it's just crazy. And again, because most people don't have a necessarily a direction. That, I mean, I'm not against social media. Uh, normally this time of night, uh, I mean, for the last hour, I would be just watching nonsense videos on either YouTube or Instagram. But that's my time. It's like, okay, that time of night, uh, it's really, I don't want to do any work. It's late. Just before we're going to bed, I like to watch some stuff that's nonsense. But doing that during the day, um, that doesn't, doesn't make sense. But we see that especially our youth are doing that so much their uh, energy is being wasted and not being pulled in um, to um, do other stuff, to do useful things. Um, that's that's what we are seeing. Uh, let's hear from others. Uh, what do you see, uh, what do you guys see being wasted uh, in your societies? 
our friends in Nepal um, or Zimbabwe. Is anybody there? I know they're logged in. So there, I, I think it's just you and me on the call. Unless if the internet is really bad that they cannot hear us. No, oh, we, we can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, okay, well, you guys are very quiet. I thought maybe you left. I'm just kidding. Um, I, well, uh, you, 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 your network is breaking up and down. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. So uh, what do you see in your society that's being wasted? Yeah, mostly time and uh, like the youth are uh, getting wasted, abusing alcohol and drugs. So yeah, it, those like the shortage of uh, employment and other things are causing that, and they just kill the time just doing drugs, and just getting high. So mostly time, and, yeah, they're probably destroying the night. Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. All right. All right. So, so what can we do? Uh, I mean, how can we gay uh, get youth engaged, children and youth engaged into not wasting their time? I know um, Ruth is very much involved uh, in a project like this. Uh, does anybody else have any other idea? How do we um, get our youth engaged in things that um, so they're not wasting? Their life and their time. We can give them a timetable. Timetable. Okay. All right. Are there, um, I mean, but it has to be something that's interesting to them as well. Timetable is fine. Uh, but what I'm saying, having two youth myself, uh, it's very hard to get them engaged in anything. I mean, they are engaged in their school. Uh, one of them works and goes to college. The other one just does college. They hang around with their friends, but anytime I ask them, it's like, would you like to do a service project or something like that? They say, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 we want to do it. But unless if I really get them engaged and uh, they don't, they're not interested in it. It's, it's, I think it's becoming very difficult. And I'm not sure what the, what the solution is. Well, there are so many challenges uh, in our societies as we have all noted in there. Um, so getting them engaged is going to be very difficult, but we have to do it. So keep this in mind uh, that this is all part of our finances and, and we have to do it as well, right? Okay, uh, for the final um, uh, 50 minutes, I'd like to get into a little bit of more of the financial stuff. Um, so I'm going to get, uh, open up the, uh, let's see. Now open up the retirement. So let's let's talk about a little bit about retirement. Normally we go from generosity to retirement, but that's okay. Uh, we are moving a little faster um, in this series. Uh, I want to open up. So I'm opening up the advanced level, the material that's in the advanced level, and uh, going to concentrate on. Uh, Retirement. Uh, so, what is your idea? What what is uh, what's considered retirement? Can anybody um, share thoughts about what is retirement? What does it mean to be retired? Retirement is not working for uh, yeah, day to day life needs. Okay, so Sundari says, uh, can you repeat that again, please? Pardon? Can you repeat that again, please? Yeah, it is not working for the day-to-day -day needs. Okay. Um, Zubanka, go ahead. Um, People can't work for whole life and, uh, because of physically uh, obstacles. They they can work whole life and uh, they have to be prepared for that stage of life. They have to they must have some saving or or, or source of income in that period of life. Okay. Uh, is there a particular time that we I mean 
is it a particular time that we get to retire or is it different for everyone? Uh, what are some of the thoughts? Previously, around 60 years, people were thinking of retirement. Nowadays, people want to retire early and do whatever they want to do. <laughs> okay. I, I thought the retirement age would go up because we're living longer. Yeah. But now there's a lot of talk about financial freedom, how to retire early. I don't know what they are going to do after retiring. Okay. That's that's a very good question. Okay. Is that, uh, is that generally... Uh, uh, everywhere in the world or in India, where, where are you seeing that? Uh, in India, I think uh, newly this financial awareness is becoming more and more and uh, there are a lot of classes going on and uh, just to attract people to the classes, so they are giving all these uh, uh, this uh, uh, ideas that you can retire early. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. About that. You're absolutely right. I mean, there is that promise because we are seeing things that may look like we can retire early. Uh, but let's see if we uh, can actually do that. Um, all right. Uh, our friends uh, around the world, um, any other thoughts? What do you see in your societies as uh, when people want to retire? Um, anybody else? I hope everybody can hear me. So here in Zimbabwe, there is this thing. It's not really happening, but a lot of people are trying to do it. I retired before my 40, so it's a big thing. And uh, you do have a lot of people that are not conscious in the sort of that back, and they're trying to invest in real estate, get like probably ten rental properties by the time they're forty, and um, so that they won't really have to work really, really hard. Um, so that's 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 a big thing that a lot of people are starting to really start to talk about, and um, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, our friends in Nepal, uh, Sirpa, Kalika. Go ahead. Uh, somebody was gonna turn on their microphone. Go ahead. So uh, as we started uh, the program, uh, particularly in the patient's lesson, we have this table in here. Um, if you remember, we talked about, we are always investing in our own or in our children or in our society's future. Um, again, we started in the mother's womb at that nine months, mother provided for us. We developed the limbs that we needed for life on earth. Um, and then here, uh, the first 20 years or so, uh, we concentrate on just education and parents provide for us. And then from 21, or I mean, this is not the exact uh, age, but around that, that time, we begin to earn some active income, continue to gain education and experience. And uh, we should be thinking about um, uh, moving from active to passive income, generating both at the same time. And, and I think in our society, starting to generate passive income, uh, more and more people are learning about it, um, true, especially maybe that's one of the good things about social media is that, yes, um, they're learning more about it. Uh, but I also believe that, unfortunately, people are seeing things that are not uh, feasible or attainable for everyone. Um, uh, for example, I know when we go to the schools and we ask the children, uh, what would you like to do when you grow up? A lot of them say, I want to be an influencer. I want to be a YouTuber. And when we ask them, well, what are you going to YouTube about or influence about? Well, we don't know. Uh, but we see them very successful. They drive good cars. They have good clothing. Um, and once I even asked the child <clears throat> in grade, I think, three or four, um, I said, so how many uh, successful influencers are in the world? His response was like 10, 10 billion. <laughs> and that's what it be. I said, well, maybe you need to check and see how many people actually live on Earth before thinking that there are 10 billion successful YouTubers. Uh, but again, our system is really uh, having a huge effect, even on our children, um, that because of what they see on social media, they think, that, oh, it's, it's very easy to become rich, materially rich. Uh, <clears throat> but 
we need to plan for it. Retirement is something that most of us will uh, get to, hopefully. And hopefully we get there, um, whatever age we get to, uh, we are still physically healthy, um, that we can do uh, things with it. And that's why we also put in the, what kind of legacy I want to leave behind. Hoping that while we are thinking about retirement, uh, we also think about what are we going to do in there? Yes, traveling is good. Um, I don't know what else is, uh, maybe writing a book or doing something that we always wanted to do, but also always uh, putting um, the philanthropic deeds. Um, these are the things that we need to do while we are on earth. Uh, and philanthropic deeds, uh, sacrificing and being service to humanity uh, is, is quite important. So uh, let's concentrate on that and see how do we actually get. Um, so before I switch over to the other screen, what are the things that you are doing uh, personally to prepare yourself for retirement? Or have you started at what age? Let's, let's ask this. Have you started, for uh, especially for a young audience, have you started to think about your retirement uh, time? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Well, you're thinking, what are you doing? Are you taking action? Yeah, I'm just applying for this day. And then uh, I think when it's approved, I'll start uh, putting structures on that piece of land. It's uh, quite big. Then uh, we'll turn it into the resort. Okay. Yeah, so I think. So, okay. And uh, like people will be using the venue for uh, team buildings and stuff. Okay, so you have, from what I understood, you have purchased the land or something, and I think you've mentioned this before, um, to start a, a resort. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm still doing the steps of uh, acquiring the land. So. Okay. All right, very good. How about Lucy? It's very quiet today. Lucy, what, what are your, have you started to plan for retirement? <laughs> Try to, Alex. Um, that's why I'm working 18 hours a day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, if all, so if you all work 18 hours a day, we can uh, have a good retirement? I think so, man. That's the plan, you know. That's the plan. Retire by forty. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, Sundari, we got one of those who wants to retire by forty by working eighteen hours a day. All right. Uh, and how old are you now, Lucy? Well, I'm thirty-three, man. Oh, thirty-three. So only got seven years to retire. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I I hope that we're still in touch in seven years, uh, so I can check. I'm gonna hold. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to it. Uh, this is being recorded, um, so. Um, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, you'll get there. Um, so what are the things you do besides uh, working 18 hours a day? Are there other things you do? I think for me, it's land. Um, so I've already acquired a few pieces of land. Um, uh, that's about what 8,000 square meters. Um, so I'm hoping to put cluster development. Uh, um, so I'm really working hard to get loans from the bank. Um, so that I can at least start putting those structures in the next maybe two or three years. Okay. Yeah, All so right. that's my chairman. <laughs> okay, very good. You're a very wise person. Okay, very good. Thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, the girls are not with you tonight, Nicole and uh, Mona? Okay. Um, Sundari, uh, since you and I seem to be the... Uh, I, I want to say, well, hold on, let's see. Uh, Ruth, uh, Ruth, you want to say something? Yes. Mm, concerning um, about my retirement. Okay. Yeah. Mm, for me, I would love to train more children and youths yeah, and teaching them a lot of skills, different skills, and build something like a, um, an orphanage and a school because um, when you grow up you reach the age of 60 70 this energy that i have at the moment i will not be able to do the things that i'm doing now so the future generation 
should take up this responsibility. And that is only if I train them, I equip them with the necessary tools for them to, to become like, like me. Okay. So, okay. so is that, so I, I know that that's your goal to open up an orphanage and things, but um, how are you supporting yourself? Do you work? Do you have a paying job? Pardon? I, I said, I repeat. Uh, uh, are you, how are you supporting yourself? Your uh, life necessities. How are you paying for your life necessities? I know you work a lot with children and youth. But how are you paying for your uh, life necessities at this point? Yeah, um, I do some a bit of business, okay. and I also get uh, some stipend from where I'm saving. Okay. Those, yeah, they help me provide my basic needs just. Okay. But uh, in future, I would also love to build houses. Mm -hmm. and put people there to start renting because okay. when you, I grow up these things that I'm doing, I will not be able. But if I have houses where people are renting, at least they'll be paying me something monthly. Okay, all right, very good. Okay, that's, that's a very good plan. Uh, our friends in Nepal, uh, you have been very quiet. I don't see them uh, unmuting themselves, okay. Uh, so, Sundari, what has been, uh, I think, uh, are you retired or are you still working? No, uh, actually, I have re retired from the active work. Okay. Both of us, I and my husband, both of us have retired from active work. Okay. But uh, we are, we are, I mean, um, uh, we are following our passion in the sense uh, he has some consultation and uh, some coaching work. I do this uh, writing and um, some uh, uh, classes, uh, like, I mean, uh, I mean, finan spreading financial awareness, especially for women and children. So I'm interested in that. So okay. already we are retired. Mentally, maybe we are active, but okay. we are not depending upon monthly income, uh, a salary or anything to lead our life. Okay, very good. So uh, when did you start to plan that you got to this point that you, and, and I'm glad you said it, you are following your passion, something that you like to do. What steps did you take to make sure that uh, once you get here, you don't have to physically work? Actually, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I think we never thought about it. Hmm. In our generation, this financial awareness was not at all there. So we never uh, saved for saving's sake. We had a very good habit of not spending un unnecessarily. That uh, resulted in uh, good uh, savings and uh, also, very, very prudent investments. We are lucky. We didn't plan for all this. Okay. All right. Um, that, that, that's very good. So um, you also said that we need to be uh, conscious. And, and so I'm, the, this is the material that we put together for selflessness and retirement. And, and we put it in the selflessness because we are thinking that uh, most people, uh, when they're young, they're only just thinking about the uh, current um, time, the current situation. They, uh, if they have, uh, if they have money, um, they just spend it uh, on things that are not necessary. Of course, this doesn't mean that we don't do anything, but we spend wisely. We don't just buy things that um, we um, don't need um, just because other people have it. Um, and, and again, I have been criticized many times. Uh, for why am I being frugal? Why am I being um, this? And, and I'm so proud to say that since 2016, that uh, is now six years now. Um, and at that point, uh, I was 50. So I can easily say that by the age 50, um, I did uh, retire uh, from working, from physically working. As you can see, I'm still working. I'm still doing a lot of stuff. But just as Sundari said, um, really following my passion. This has become my passion. It's uh, it's great to be able to do this. Um, so retirement is that uh, is a time of financial uh, worry-free time. We don't want to degrade ourselves, be a burden on ourselves, our children, and society. Uh, enjoy the flexibility of doing what we want uh, to do instead of what we do to survive. 
And unfortunately, I still see a lot of people in their older ages. And it is very clear that they're not doing what they do because they like it. It's very obvious that they are doing the work because they have to. And, and I actually faced that the first year when I came to the United States, which was almost 40 years ago. Um, I came to the States when I was 19 years old, and I used to work at a restaurant. And I remember there was a worker. He was very old. I would say easily 75, maybe 80. And he had a bent back, and um, he was just taking the trash out. And, and that picture always stuck in my mind. It's like, why is it? Is this how the society is? I mean, I was new in the States, only a few months in the States. But is this how it is going to be? Um, and, and like Sundari, um, I did not start investing, let's say, into real estate. I didn't want to be a renter uh, from the beginning, um, uh, but I never thought, I'm going to stop because my internet, okay. Uh, uh, that um, I this is what I have to do. But I think because of our upraising, the way um, my parents uh, brought me up, and then also the same thing with my wife. Uh, we were just conscious. We did not spend things that were unnecessary. We didn't buy things that we would only use for maybe one or two months and then throw it away. Uh, so uh, there's really no uh, official time to say, well, this is when you start saving for retirement. You, uh, saving, developing this a habit of saving is something that needs to start uh, from a young age. Uh, if we know how to save when we are young, uh, as we get to become a youth and older, uh, st uh, setting up for retirement is just saving, but then also investing. Um, how much to save for retirement? It really depends on. Unfortunately, there are a lot of financial advisors that sit down and calculate for people, well, based on your current uh, lifestyle, this is how much you need to um, uh, retire save up for retirement. But then it becomes a very overwhelming number uh, for people. Uh, when they see that, it's like, well, I can never save that much. Um, so it's, uh, I mean, it is the truth. If they want to continue their lifestyle the same way, that's what they need. Uh, but sometimes uh, it can be very burdening um, some on people. Uh, for retirement, uh, there's a big difference between saving and investing. Um, and then we'll get to it. Um, so let's hold on to that one. I, we put a little chart here together, and this hopefully will um, show, especially for uh, young adults. Uh, we basically said, and this is uh, again an example, if I can save $10 a day, just for example, and I can invest it somewhere uh, that I can have a maybe 7.5% growth every year, uh, we looked at the difference between if I start saving for retirement at age 35, for example, to 36, that's to 65, what would be the difference if I start 10 years earlier? Um, so we took the $10 a day um, and put it together during this um, 30 years from 35 to 65, I would be saving $109,000. Um, and then with that 7.5% uh, growth, at age 65, I should have about $400,000. That's a growth of 269, 270%. And if I continue, if my money continues to grow at that 7.5%, I can take out every year um, if I, let's say, retire at 65. Um, so then I need to withdraw, begin to withdraw 30,000. Uh, the, only the interest because I want, I don't want to touch the principal. I want to, uh, uh, this number, the 400000 to remain in there so it can continue to give me interest. Uh, can I live on with $30,000 uh, every year in the States? Uh, it's going to be very difficult, especially in California, where things are very expensive. Uh, this may not be um, doable. But now, if I take that same $10 every day at 7.5%, and I start just 10 years uh, sooner, uh, maybe uh, by 25, usually people are done with their education and they start to work. Uh, so instead of that 10 years earlier, will save me about $40,000 in savings. Uh, now at the 7.5%, uh, 
uh, my total money that I have saved uh, with the investment invested, it would be 900, almost a million dollars. And then it will give me uh, almost $70,000 a year to live on, which uh, would be a lot easier. It would be twice, more than twice as much as I would if I were to start at age 35. So this usually gives a very good picture uh, as an example uh, to our young ones as when you're supposed to start uh, to save and set up for retirement. Any question on that? Now, again, this part is not for uh, children in uh, primary schools. Uh, this is more of a youth and adults uh, section, this retirement. Because I know Sundari was going to ask this question. <laughs> go, ahead, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, Zanago. Another is interesting. <clears throat> well, I'm interested in that seven and half percent of growth. Is it uh, real or because uh, nowadays I think it's not uh, not uh, not expected, not can be expected seven seven and a half in long period, of course, even more. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think it's. I mean, the, this is an example. Uh, it really depends. Uh, sometimes it could be more. Sometimes it could be less. Uh, in the United States, I think we see this. It's uh, easily doable. Seven and a half percent growth. Uh, it's very modest. Uh, there are actually companies, there are insurance companies that uh, provide even that. Um, real estate, if we get in in the right time, um, it can be a lot more. Um, like I said, we got into real estate in, uh, we started in 2006, uh, but then in 2011, after the crash, uh, we bought most of our real estate and they have done uh, great. I mean, uh, it has been just phenomenal, but we got it in the right time. So uh, I'm not sure how it is in Croatia or other parts of the world. Uh, or even if you look at 5% um, interest uh, in growth. Well, in the last five years or 10 years, 3% mm -hmm. is something even three percent is not okay if you invest in some real estate and but that's fortune if the the price goes up okay but we see that price can go down yes but, uh, investing in the bank you can you can get nothing because the interest rate is uh, 0 0.01 yes. investing in uh, shares Ah oh, well, in Croatia, you you can expect something serious. Expe uh, investing in uh, bonds, mm -hmm. uh, in German German bonds had a negative interest rate. Oh, okay, yes, I remember that, and and so does Japan. Japan also has a negative interest rate too. Well, it's, it's similar with lots of countries in uh, in in the Europe. Yeah. Yes. So so last ten years, uh, you can expect some real growth. Seven percent would be oh, would be really really uh, desirable. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, that, yes. that's the main problem of that. And if I invest uh, twenty years with interest of with growth of of one or two percent, I can get really nothing. Okay, it, it, it's not enough. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is not. Uh, think that it's uh, general and for everyone, for every country. Um, it, the, and again, for us in the U.S., uh, it was the right time in 2000, after 2008. Um, whoever invested in real estate, actually the price of the real estate that was purchased at that point, um, it has gone over uh, twice. So it's been 100%, sometimes even 150%. Uh, even before the latest inflation and everything. Now, it is bound to go down, uh, but I guess that's why we live in the um, U.S. That's one of the benefits that we've had here um, is that growth has been attainable, uh, even even better than this. Um, so, yes. How, how is it in other countries? Um, is this something... Uh, and, and again, this is just as an example. Every country is different. Every society is different. Um, so, Daria, how is uh, investing in India, whether in stocks or real estate? 
yeah actually i was wondering whether 7 7.5 is sustainable but if you are if you are into asset allocation and diversification and all that i think it is doable because so in bank nowadays we are getting uh, some 4% and then for bonds we get some 7 or 8% also then in mutual fund you get 10% at least yeah. in stock market you may get 15 to 30% also so when everything goes up and down over a period of time so at at least as an average i think we can uh, we can easily quote 7.5 yeah. that is doable yeah. right now going forward i don't know Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it is so. That's yeah. true. Uh, so, so again, yeah. I mean, uh, in Croatia, this is not probably sustainable because we, I, I mean, we don't understand the. I don't know the details of financial system, and that's why um, right down here it says your facilitator. As a facilitator, when you're presenting this in your community, you have to consider. Uh, right. I think the internet went slow again. Okay. I am waiting for the internet. I think it went slow. Something. Okay, all right. Uh, so, uh, yes, as you are presenting this to like um, youth and adults, you would have to consider, and you, make, you can make some adjustments. You should make some adjustments. That's one of the things about the program. Um, is that especially the advanced level and even in the basic level, uh, a lot of the specific information are left uh, for the facilitator um, to bring in and present. Uh, that's why, um, like as you have seen, I have not talked about like how our banking uh, system works here. Uh, the banking system in general works the same all throughout the world, uh, but then how much interest they give, what kind of products they offer, the loans, the type of loans that they provide. Um, those are all that you will have to, hopefully either you have the knowledge yourself or if not, um, you should be able to find people uh, that can provide that knowledge um, in your local um, uh, society, in your local uh, economy. But as you can see, the foundation is the same. It's like we have to uh, save for retirement because it is going to come. Now, how much and how do we do it? That's uh, something that we need to consider locally. Um, all right. Um, I want to see uh, what is the difference between investing and saving? What are your thoughts? We're going to put it in the chat as well. What is the difference between saving and investing? I would say in the amount of risk put it in. In saving, we can expect uh, our money with some interest. In investment, uh, there there is uh, more risk involved. Uh, we are not sure that we will get all money put it in, uh, but uh, the the grow the the interest or the what we get uh, can be a lot higher than we invested. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts? Yeah, and saving is like uh, having 10 fruits, keeping them in the fridge mm -hmm. and eating them every day. Yep. Investing is like having a, planting a tree, growing it for 15 years and enjoying nearly 100 fruits every year. Mm -hmm. So I see the saving and investing the same way. Um, for short goals, we can have, say, you can use savings. For longer term goals, you need investing. Okay, very good. Uh, any other thoughts? From anybody else? Yeah, right. So I think both of you uh, uh, described it perfectly. Exactly. Saving is, is safe. Uh, we put our money either in a savings account. Uh, what we have here in the US is called a, a certificate of deposit. Usually it's for like a longer term. You give, you lend your money to the bank for at least like three months to even like five, six years. And they give it a little higher interest, but it's not that much higher. But the money is safe, uh, except that it is not safe against inflation. The inflation is going up and the money is not growing. But as Sundari said, it's good for like short term. Uh, let's say if you're buying a car or a house or something like that, and we don't want to tie up our money into an investment, um, then saving is good. And But then uh, investing, it has risks and it has rewards. Uh, and that's why we put investing under courage 
to invest, uh, it takes a lot of courage. Some investments are a little bit more, uh, uh, I don't want to say guaranteed, uh, but they have a lot less risk. And that's something that we see particularly um, in like real estate. Uh, if it's purchased in a good time, uh, real estate is something that is tangible, whether it's land, uh, a land with a building on it, anything like that. Even if the economy goes really bad, as long as we did not borrow too much against it, uh, it should be safe. That piece of uh, land or building is a tangible item and it will be safe. Uh, however, as you all, most of um, you remember in 2008, from like 2000 to 2008, uh, people just went crazy. Uh, they borrowed too much uh, in the hope of the real estate really making them uh, rich. And unfortunately, a lot of people lost everything that they had because they got greedy. Uh, they just thought that they could buy a place. Here in, in the United States, what was happening, uh, a lot of new homes were being built. Uh, so people would go and put their names uh, before the house was even built, and they would put down a deposit. And sometimes they would even sell the house before it was built to somebody else for a higher price. Well, of course, in short term, it worked really well for people. Uh, but unfortunately, as humans, often we don't know our limit and we get greedy. Uh, so as more and people started to do this, then it got to a point that it just was not sustainable. And that is when everything collapsed. Um, and I, from what I am reading, uh, the same thing is happening again in China. Uh, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of builders that have started building uh, apartments and things, and they have accepted deposits um, from potential buyers. And with those, they have just expanded too much that now they cannot sustain it. They have filed for bankruptcy. People have lost their money. Uh, they, uh, they were hoping that they would move into a new place, but it's not happening. So, Investing, we really have to be careful. There's a lot of risks. There's a lot of hope. There's a lot of potential. It's long term. Uh, it takes patience. It takes commitment. It takes determination. Um, something that unfortunately most of our youth um, don't have these days. Um, they see that uh, some people uh, get rich very quick, uh, uh, but they think and they think that this is for everyone. Uh, so a few things about investing uh, that we've talked about. Uh, there is the, uh, uh, and, and one thing that we, stop. No. And we wait. Going back, okay. Uh, well, one of the elements that we really bring into our program um, as it says in here, uh, traditionally investing is confined to material possessions uh, such as stocks, bonds, business, and real estate. However, as seen through the uh, of the ABCs of Wealth uh, program, there are many other aspects where investing is necessary for personal, family, and community advancement. We consider investing. I don't know why. Uh, we consider investing in education, our marriage, our children, our relationship, our work. Uh, and these are all things that we have to consider as investing. And this is how we have been able even to teach investment uh, to our children in our primary school. So if we look at... Um, so if you remember with our children, uh, we have to give them the treasure box and the treasure boxes have the four slots that are represented in here. It has spend, uh, ship. It has spend, share, invest, and save. Um, and our idea of investing is not just limited. We don't start our children by telling them, well, you have to go invest in stocks or you have to invest in real estate. Um, at first, we try to help them understand that we invest in our family, in our education, in our college, in our community, and then into stocks and business and, and so forth. So that's how we've been able to 
uh, teach even to young children what the idea of investing is. That's an excellent way of telling it, Mr. Alex. It is exceedingly good. The first time I'm hearing. Yeah, and, and, and they understand it. Uh, they understand it. And, and the idea, if you remember this um, sheet that we did, My Wealth and Resources, uh, it's the same idea in here. Uh, we can invest and share all of these, our knowledge, our talents, our physical and mental. I know the internet just went slow. I don't have to wait. Okay. Uh, our mental, emotional, spiritual powers. So in, in classroom, um, if you if you wonder what this is, I think I did mention it. In the printed workbook, uh, you can cut uh, one of these boxes. It's on the paper. Or you can highlight it in here and say, Today, not only I am sharing um, some money, um, so if I go to the register book, I'm just going to go into two files. So the money that we give to the children as uh, uh, pocket money or as allowance, not only I am uh, putting some into spend for my life necessities, I am also saving for the wife that I want to have, but I'm also sh sharing my money and uh, sharing and investing my money as well as these different resources that I have. I can share and invest my heart, my smile, my um, something. And this children really understand really well. So that is how we present investing in, uh, in our classes. All right. Now, coming back to uh, the investments into, um, let's say, material stuff. Uh, we usually do need an initial investment. So, for example, if you're uh, planning on buying a piece of property, uh, I'm ready. we need to uh, save money um, to buy uh, the piece of property. Um, then uh, we know that investing requires, as we said, it requires risk. So there's obviously going to be challenges. Um, as Sundari was saying, we need to diversify. We should not just put money in real estate. We should not just put money into stocks or bonds. It has to be diversified. It has, we have to do a lot of different things in there. Um, the other one is uh, independent investigation of truth. Uh, would anyone, does anyone want to uh, uh, guess what that means? Independently investigating the truth? especially in the investment uh, term? I think that we should check the facts presented from invest uh, from uh, the person or institution that offer investment opportunity. Because when somebody wants our money, he will, uh, he will uh, talk with nice words about that. He will put the, uh, the maybe the not so real numbers, mm -hmm. and we should invest it if is that uh, possible. If it's too nice to to be true, it's possibly not true. Yeah, exactly. Have you had? Uh, have you uh, encountered any situation like this where somebody suggested an investment to you and you found out that it wasn't the right one for you? I would say every day we have such situation. I have such situation. Okay, all right. Um, anybody else has seen um, has uh, seen this uh, issue? Oh. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so I think here in Zimbabwe we have a lot of people uh, purporting to be invested in Bitcoin, so they'll tell you invest uh, two hundred dollars a day. Uh, by the end of tomorrow, you'll have a thousand dollars, and there's ten thousand. You make twenty thousand in two days, and so there's a lot of those uh, scams going on. Yes, absolutely. Uh, like Zudenko said, we see it every day. We hear it on the radio. We see it on social media. Uh, some of them are uh, truly. Uh, they're not telling us. They they're not painting the whole picture. Uh, they're leaving some details out, uh, but some of them are, uh, they are just speaking 
uh, from personal experience. Now, what about that? If somebody has had good luck in anything. So for example, uh, I'm, I'm going to use my example. I'm telling you that I did really well in real estate. Our family did real well in uh, real estate. Um, and for the past six years, we've been financially um, independent. Um, should you go, and, and, I'm, and I'm not telling a lie, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Should you go based on my advice and get yourself into real estate? Actually, that is why today finance is being uh, labeled as personal finance. It differs from person to person. Even for a person, from age to age, it differs. So uh, what is applicable to one person may not be applicable to another. What is applicable to that person himself may not be applicable to him at a later stage. So before investing into something, we have to take into account all, all these uh, facts. Yes, exactly. Thank you. So uh, this is what's happening to us. We see uh, with our eyes, but we know that our eyes really deceive. Uh, you know, we see an airplane in the sky that's a very small, but we know that the airplane is very big. Uh, we hear things and we smell things, uh, but often we don't utilize our brain. Um, and people count on that uh, because uh, people know that other people are easily persuaded. Uh, to think a little different. It's the same thing. When we go to a supermarket, uh, we see things that we don't need and uh, we are uh, tempted uh, to grab them. Um, same thing with investments. Uh, if I say I did very well, well, there was a lot of uh, conditions right for me that it worked out really well. Now, overall, yes, uh, real estate investments are good, but you have to do it in the right time. Um, for example, uh, currently, um, I don't think in our society here in the U.S. because the interest rate is going higher and then prices have started to come down. This may not be a good uh, time to um, invest in real estate. I have to wait. Uh, we saw the same thing happening with uh, Bitcoin. I was actually explaining Bitcoin to the group of youth that I was presenting to uh, two nights ago. And I showed them that Bitcoin started from even pennies uh, when it went public. Uh, it was, I think, about $500 uh, each Bitcoin. And it did go all the way up to 60 some thousand dollars And now it's down to 16 So they they really need to understand, we all need to understand, that just because somebody says something is good for us, that doesn't, uh, we, we don't, we shouldn't blindly follow them. We should just kind of do our own investigation and see uh, what it is that we have to do. Uh, the next one is life necessities don't stop. Something I have seen um, is that uh, many people just uh, put everything that they have um, into an investment, particularly when it's business. They uh, cash out their savings, their retirement or whatever to start uh, a business. Uh, but they don't think that, well, the business is going to take some time to get started, uh, to get going. Uh, and they forget that they still have to live as well. Uh, this is something that I have seen a lot, and I usually recommend, uh, I mean, that, since I have been involved in several startups, um, it's like, uh, don't count on any income coming in from a new business that you start for at least five years. If you do get any income, it's icing on the cake, but at least you're not counting on that income. If the uh, business is successful and it can sustain itself, then then it's good. Uh, but that's something that most people don't consider when they're starting a business. Um, and then also the last thing in here before we stop is uh, being mindful of being ethical. Um, there are a lot of investments um, that are not necessarily ethical. Um, I think the Danko was saying that people were borrowing money to go uh, I mean, uh, uh, betting on uh, soccer games is not necessarily investing, but people were doing that. So that's kind of gambling, being very um, cautious of that. Let me see what Ruth wrote. Uh, Ruth wrote, saving can be used a, a long period of time uh, while investing is for a very longer period of time, even for future generations. Uh, can grow up benefits uh, from one's uh, investment. Yes. What we invest today can benefit our children, our grandchildren, if you do it the right way. And, and the last thing uh, for tonight is that Patience, we have to have patience because investments take time. 
Uh, if you're not patient, uh, then investing really does not uh, make much sense. Uh, all right, so your assignments for uh, next week um, is... All right, so um, assignments for next week. Uh, if you didn't start on the thankful um, lesson, please um, start that, even though it's supposed to be for last week. Uh, respect, uh, go ahead and continue, especially finding ways of uh, stopping the waste. Those are the things that we definitely have to do. Uh, the um, We have three lesson plans left in the basic level, which is generosity, um, truthfulness, and creativity. And I think we can finish the program next week, actually, because we are ahead of schedule since it's a smaller group. Uh, and then that would leave us to enjoy the holiday break um, on the 24th. Uh, and I'm actually traveling too, so 23rd. Uh, um, so uh, another assignment uh, would be to start looking at uh, what are the things that we can do to be becoming generous. Um, so. Um, you have, you need to list out the things that you can do to bring joy and happiness to others. Um, if there are uh, locations or organizations that you've been volunteering uh, that can help others. Um, and then what can I do to bring joy and happiness to myself, uh, which retirement is part of that. Uh, but let's kind of think about what are the things that we can do to uh, bring joy and happiness uh, to myself. Uh, this one, I'll talk about it, the election process, I'll talk about it <clears throat> next week. Uh, for truthfulness, there are no activities. I'll just explain it, what it is. Uh, in classroom, there are some activities, uh, but not for the online. And then the final one is going to be creativity. Um, so we'll be talking about your talents, uh, your passions. Uh, we would love to see your talent if you're up for recording it and uh, posting it in the uh, WhatsApp group. Uh, it could be Pictures, drawing, singing, um, we've had a lot of different uh, things. Cooking, people have put in uh, the things that they cook uh, um, in the in the WhatsApp group because uh, we will see as uh, talent is something that we can really draw an income from um, and our passion. So those are the assignments. I will put it in the WhatsApp group as well. I'm going to stop here, stop sharing to see if there are any questions before we conclude for tonight. Are we good? Well, I take quiet as being good. Yes. So, thank, thank you so much, everyone, again, uh, for accompanying me uh, tonight uh, in the morning. Uh, most, most of you guys uh, during the day. Uh, for Sundari and I, it's uh, late night. Sundari, again, thank you so much. It's 3 a.m. there. I know that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. One of the things that we are thankful for is this class. Thank you so much. And, and, and the best reward that I can ask and get is your participation and your commitment. And, and I know that you will bring this education to your local community. Um, this is definitely, I know several of you have already talked and you're talking on the side. And uh, we'll see where we go into the new year with this program. All right, very good. Have a good one.